Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we're tackling leak code problem 2054, two best non-overlapping events. This is a really interesting medium level problem that tests our ability to manage intervals and optimize choices. It sounds a bit technical, but I'll break it down so it makes perfect sense. Let's get started. Here is the problem. We are given a list of events. Each event has a start time, an end time, and a value, like a score you get for attending. The rule is simple. You can pick at most two events to attend, but they cannot overlap. Our goal is to choose up to two events that give us the highest possible total score. There are a few important constraints to keep in mind. First, non-overlapping is strict. If one event ends at time t, the next one must start at t plus one or later. You can't catch the tail end of one and the start of another at the exact same moment. Also, we aren't forced to pick two events, we could pick just one if that gives us the best outcome, or even zero, though usually, we'll want to pick something. We want the maximum total value. Let's look at an example. We have three events. Event zero runs from time one to three with a value of two. Event one runs from four to five, also value two. Event two runs from two to four with a value of three. If we pick event zero, it ends at three. Event one starts at four, which is valid because four is greater than three. The sum would be two plus two, which is four. If we tried to pick event 2, it starts at 2 and ends at 4. It overlaps with event 0 and event 1, so we can't pair it with anything. The best we can do is the pair of event 0 and event 1, giving us a total of 4. Just a quick heads up. We'll be walking through the solution using Python logic, because it's very readable, but don't worry if that's not your main language. I'll be showing the full code for Java, C++ and JavaScript towards the end of the video, so stick around. The first approach uses dynamic programming. The core idea is recursion. First, we sort all events by their start time. Then, looking at the events one by one, we make a choice. We can either skip the current event and look at the next one, or we can attend the current event. If we attend it, we get its value, but then we have to skip any future events that overlap with it. Since our list is sorted, we can use a binary search to instantly find the next event that starts after our current one ends. This saves us from checking every single future event manually. Okay. We've talked about the big picture and the logic. Now let's see what this looks like as actual code. I'll put the full solution up on the screen first. And don't worry, after that, we'll walk through the most important sections together. Here's the Python code for the top-down approach. It involves a main function that sorts the events and sets up a cache, and a helper function that handles the recursion. Take a moment to scan it, especially the find underscore events function. Let's break down the recursive logic. We have two base cases. If we've already picked two events, or if we've run out of events to check, we stop and return zero. If we're still going, we perform a binary search to find the index low. This index points to the first event that starts after our current event ends. Then we calculate two possibilities. Include is where we take the current event's value and recursively call the function starting from that new valid index low, increasing our count. Exclude is where we ignore the current event and just move to the very next index keeping our count the same. We simply take the maximum of these two options. Now for the second method, which uses a min heap. This is often more efficient for interval problems. We still sort by start time. As we iterate through the events, we use a min heap to keep track of events we've seen, but that might still be overlapping. For every new event we look at, we check the heap. Have any events finished before this new one starts? If yes, we pop them off the heap and update a variable keeping track of the best value we've seen from a completed non-overlapping event. The answer for the current event is simply its own value plus that best completed value. Here's the code for the min heap strategy. It's quite a bit shorter. We have a priority queue pq and two variables, max underscore val and max underscore sum. Let's look closer at the loop. For each event, the while loop checks the top of the heap. The heap stores pairs of end time value. If the smallest end time in the heap is less than our current event start time, that means the heap event is compatible. We pop it and update max underscore val. Max underscore val essentially remembers the highest score from any single event that happened entirely in the past. Then, max underscore sum checks if combining that historic best with our current event beats the record. Finally, we push the current event into the heap so it can be a historic best for some future event. There is a third way using a greedy approach or a sweep line technique. Instead of keeping intervals intact, we break every event into two separate time points, a start point and an end point. We put all these points on a single timeline and sort them. Then we just walk down the timeline. 
if we hit a start point, we check the best value we've encountered from any event that has already finished. If we hit an end point we realize oh, this event is done, and we update our maximum completed value, it's very elegant, and avoids the heap entirely. Here is the code for the greedy approach. We create a times list. Notice that for the end time, we use inanan plus one. This handles the inclusivity rule. An event ending at t is only available for the next event starting at t plus one. A small but critical detail here is how we handle ties. If one event ends at time five and another starts at time five, can we pick both? No, the second one must start at six. By adding one to the end time, we shift the availability to the correct moment. Also, we use zero to label an end type event and one for a start type event. Since the default sort puts zero before one, if two things happen at the exact same millisecond, we process the ending, which updates our max value, before the starting, which uses the max value. This ensures we always have the most up-to-date information. So how fast are these solutions? All three approaches, DP with binary search, the min heap, and the greedy sort, rely heavily on sorting the events first. Sorting takes big O of n log n time. The rest of the logic involves iterating or heap operations which are also efficient. So the overall time complexity is dominated by the sort, giving us n log n. As for space, we need linear space, or big O of n, to store the DP table, the heap, or the list of time points. All right, before we jump into the other languages, I want to quickly show you a personal project I built to solve a problem that always drove me crazy. It's an app called My Daily To Do. My biggest frustration with every other to-do app was retyping the same things every single day. Go to the gym, review code, work on the daily leap code problem. You know the drill. So I built my app around one simple but powerful idea, separating your routine tasks from your one-off tasks. Routine tasks, marked with the little refresh icon, automatically reset for the next day. One-off tasks, like ship new feature, get the little puff of smoke icon, and they disappear for good once you're done. This small change turns a dumb checklist into a smart scheduler. If that sounds useful, you can try it right now on the web. The link is in the description. And one more thing I want to make super clear. Right now, as a thank you for being an early supporter, the app is 100% free. There are no ads and no subscriptions whatsoever. This means you get access to everything, including really powerful features like presets, which let you save entire task lists and load them with a single tap. Now, down the road, creating new presets will likely become part of a premium plan to help support the channel. But, and this is the important part, any presets you create now, while it's all free, are yours to keep and use forever. So it's the perfect time to check it out on the web, play with all the features, and build out your perfect setup at no cost. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leap code easy, medium or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also, if you're looking for even more leap code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leap Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems. So if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. All right, that covers the main solution in Python. As promised, for those of you who code in other languages, I'm about to show the full solutions for Java, C++, and JavaScript. I won't be breaking these down, so just pause the video on your language of choice to check it out. All right, as promised, here is the full solution in Java, using the minheap approach. You can pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. Next up, here is the C++ version of the solution. This also uses the minheap logic. Again, feel free to pause and review the code. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. Since JavaScript doesn't have a built-in heap class in the standard library, I've used the greedy sweep line approach here, as it's much cleaner to implement. Hopefully, seeing it in a few different languages helps solidify the concepts. So let's wrap it up. We looked at three great ways to solve this. We saw how sorting is the foundational step for all of them. We learned how the sweep line concept can turn a complex interval problem into a simple iteration. And we saw that whether you use a heap or binary search, the efficiency is roughly the same, so you can choose the tool you are most comfortable with. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions.
Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video because I upload videos daily. If you want to support the channel, a few people have asked how I plan my solutions. I'm a big fan of sketching out the logic and data structures on a tablet before I code, it really helps. I've put affiliate links in the description to the tablet I use, and a few other good options. Using those links doesn't cost you anything extra, but really helps me out. Or, if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.